Hello everyone, welcome back to the lecture series of Power Electronics. In this video, I'm going to discuss the operation of single phase full wave controllers with the inductive load. In the previous session, I have discussed single phase full wave controllers with the resistive load. For example, I wanted to control the light dimmer. So light is basically resistive load. I can go for like a single phase full wave controllers with the resistive load. But in case of a motor, if I am operating the motor, speed of a motor, I would like to go for like a R load. Correct. So we basically call it as inductive load. Moving on to the discussion, how you can control the speed of an, uh, a certain motor. So by using single phase full wave controller, motor represents an inductive load. Now I'll be showing you the circuit diagram of single phase full wave controllers with the inductive load. First of all, you can see we have a single phase full wave controllers by using two control devices. Here, thyristor 1 and thyristor 2 are connected anti-parallel or you call it as inverse parallel. Why it is called inverse parallel? Anode of thyristor 1 that is connected to cathode of thyristor 2 and vice versa. That is what it is called inverse parallel. The output is applied to the inductive load. It is very clear that the R load, okay. Why it is called R load? Why? Because there are certain amount of resistance which is present in the inductive load. That is what I mentioned like R. Remember, the value of R is negligibly small. Vf represents the supply voltage. Is is represented the supply current. I0 is represent output voltage where V0 is the voltage across the load. These are the basic information about this single phase full wave controllers with the inductive load. What will happen? How does it work? Okay, the working is very simple. First of all, there are two half cycles. Correct. We have positive half cycle and a negative half cycle. Because input is purely AC. When it comes to positive half cycle, positive comes over here, negative comes over here. It is very clear. Now, the current starts flowing in this particular direction. Current is divided. The current which is flowing to thyristor T2 will be blocked because it is in reverse bias condition where the current flowing through T1 that is conductive. Why? Because that becomes forward direction. Provided T1 is a control device, it will turn on the device at a firing angle called alpha. At that time, the input current that will directly pass to the load. So that particular current is called I0. Okay, that will be directly passed into the load, come back to the supply. That means T1 is getting conductive at a firing angle of alpha. But there is a peculiarity because it is a, since it is an inductive load, current and voltage are out, not in the same phase. Voltage always leads the current. Or else we can say that current lags behind the voltage at a firing angle of phi. Correct. So that but matter of fact you have to represent. During the negative half cycle, what is going to happen? So we can mark negative half cycle means how about the negative half cycle? So the negative like uh, comes over upper side. You can see like the negative comes over here, positive comes over here. Okay. In this uh, in this certain case, so here T2 will be conductive at a delay angle of we can call beta. Okay. So the output current, uh, the I naught that flows to the load. But T1 will, will not be conductive because that, that will become reverse biased. T2 will become forward biased because negative comes over here, positive will be other side. So this is the way how does uh, the single phase full wave controller with the inductive load operate. It is operationally similar, but the thing is, uh, the uh, what, what we can say, the relation between voltage and current that is not in in phase where pure resistive load both the output voltage and current are in phase. That is a peculiarity you need to understand. Vm represents the input voltage. Vg1 is the gate impulse. And Vg2, that is also gate impulse. Because Vg1 for T1, Vg2 for T2. Correct. So, what, what will happen, you know? Uh, so, whenever you are providing the gate impulse T1, uh, the device will get turned on at a firing angle of alpha. You are absolutely right. But whenever, like... Uh, the Vs that will falls to pi, the output current will not be falling at that particular instant because both are like uh, not in the same phase. 
that is only the peculiarity you need to understand here still there is a delay you can observe there is a delay okay the current is getting lagging correct uh, then uh, the thyristor t2 will be activated when alpha plus uh, pi at the firing angle of alpha plus pi uh, here also you can represent so see it is not like uh, the device will not be like uh, turned on turned off at a firing angle uh, at turned on at 2 pi it will like uh, go for like uh, other uh, certain other other duration that delay you have to mention because current and voltage are not in the phase that point you have to remember so this is the waveform regarding single phase full wave controller with inductive load okay so this is the gating pattern so vg1 and vg2 you can observe vg1 like uh, see for turning on uh, t1 vg2 for turning on t2 right uh, the t1 is turned on during positive half cycle and carries the load current same fashion now uh, due to the inductance in the circuit, current of thyristor T1 would not fall at omega t equal to pi when the input voltage starts negative. That is another speciality. See, uh, whenever input voltage goes negative, it never falls at pi because there is a like a lagging of current behind the voltage. That is the principle you are applying here. Thyristor T1 continues to conduct until I1 falls to zero at omega t equal to beta. Conduction angle of thyristor T1 equal to, we can write delta is equal to beta minus alpha. Okay, delta. Conduction angle we can write delta is equal to beta minus alpha. Where, where it is? Can you point out? Of course, I can point out. So, this region, I can say like this region. We call it as delta. Delta is nothing but beta minus uh, pi, beta minus pi or uh, this particular duration. Okay. Beta minus alpha, sorry, beta minus alpha, beta minus, correct, okay, beta, beta, beta minus alpha, that means uh, like uh, uh, from here to here, yeah, here to here, beta minus alpha, so it will start from alpha ending to beta, so that duration is actually known as beta minus alpha, that is a delay, okay, that delay you have to, Okay, we can out of that delay. Uh, the conduction angle of thyristor T1 equal to beta minus alpha and depends on the delay angle alpha and the power factor of the load theta, power factor. Okay, here since we are using the inductive load, power factor is lagging. Okay, power, there is a lagging power factor. So current is lagging, that is what is called the lagging power factor with, because we are using inductive load. Now, we, we can easily apply the KVL, okay, by applying the KVL. First of all, you have to apply the KVL, Kirchhoff voltage law, okay. Later from that, you can calculate the current, I1 you can calculate. So, first of all, apply KVL. So, in a closed loop, uh, the sum of uh, EM, sum of EM and the voltage drop, that is equal to zero, okay, that is equal to zero. Voltage drop means we can write like a V only, okay, V plus E. V plus E equal to 0. Same principle you will be applying. Then separating the value of I1 by, by using like a differential equation. Okay. So now you know that since we are using the inductive load, is Z is known as impedance. That is equal to square root of R square plus XL square. Where XL is known as L omega. That is what they have written here. Where XL is known as inductive reactance. Inductive. Okay. Inductive. Make a note of that if you are not familiar. Inductive reactance, inductive reactance, resistance offered by the circuit is known as, the resistance offered by the inductor circuit is known as inductive reactance. You can write XL equal to L into omega, where omega is known as angular frequency. You can write angular frequency in terms of supply frequency. There is a relation omega is equal to 2 pi f. That point also you can remember. So you state this particular general equation. Theta can be computed by tan inverse of L omega by R. So from this, if you want to solve this, if you want to go further, you have to solve applying the differential equation. Okay. Here you can coefficient, you can compute A1 and A1 you can compute. Similarly, you can easily compute the I1 by changing the parameters. That's all. So simple only. Uh, here you should know the basics of the differential equation. Correct. And then uh, how to what are the major segments of 
like uh, digital electronics basic things. So how to write the expression for RMS output voltage of single phase controller with the inductive load. So we have the formula uh, square root of 2 by pi, 2 by 2 pi, alpha to beta, 2 v, v square, sin square omega t, d omega t. If you want, you can simplify it and reach this particular step. So this is regarding uh, expression for RMS voltage. So you may get a uh, like a derivation kind of questions. Similarly, uh, expression for uh, RMS thyristor current, IR equal to 1 by 2 pi alpha to beta. Why it is alpha to beta? Because see the range. See the range. The range lies between beta and alpha, this particular range. Therefore, I have written the lower limit is alpha, upper limit is beta. 2 V square sin square omega t d omega t. For the simplification, I am getting Vs into 1 by pi beta minus alpha plus sin 2 alpha by 2 plus sin 2 beta by 2. This is the expression for RMS output voltage. Likewise, thyristor current can be computed using the formula. 1 by 2 pi alpha to beta i1 square d omega t. Ultimately, uh, if you simplify, you will be getting the answer for RMS current. Similarly, RMS output current can be computed by square root of IR square plus IR square. That is means uh, square root of 2 IR square. That means square root of 2 into IR. Expression for average value of thyristor current is given by 1 by 2 pi alpha to beta i1 d omega t. So, this is the elaboration. Okay. In this uh, video, I discussed about how does single phase controller operate with the inductive load. What are the difference between inductive load and resistive load? How it comes to the output stage. Similarly, we discussed about like uh, the gating pattern and also some delay angle we have discussed. So uh, let me know in case if you have any uh, further clarification, uh, you can put up in the comment box. Okay. So I can happy to answer that. So you can go through these derivations. You may get a question in the university examination. No, not only that, if you are preparing for gate examination, definitely one or two questions will be there in this topic. So if you don't have any queries, let me conclude the session. Thank you very much for watching this video. Happy learning. Thank you.